This video was brought to you by Brilliant. The first 200 people to use the link below get 20% off an annual subscription. Having been in power since 2010, Hungary's Premier Viktor Orban has once again secured another term in office. Sunday's election saw a landslide victory for the ruling Fidesz party, winning 53% of the vote in an alliance with the KDNP. Despite running together as one electoral alliance, the six main opposition parties have received just 35% of the vote. Even as a unified bloc, the opposition actually managed to win less seats than when they ran separately, meaning that Orban will maintain a constitutional majority in the Hungarian parliament for the fourth term in a row. This is quite staggering considering how long Orban has been in politics and had more than his fair share of scandals. Having led Fidesz in every one of the nine elections since the fall of communism, this is the fifth election he's won. So what stands behind Orban's political longevity? And how did he win this election, despite the continued accusations of corruption and authoritarianism? So let's start with a question. Who actually votes for Orban? The middle lower class, the unemployed and the elderly tend to vote for Fidesz, in some part because they benefit from the government's generous social policies. Public works, labour law, deregulation and other endowments have all created economic opportunity for many rural voters. Orban's government has also introduced extensive welfare programmes for new families. Hungarian political scientist Laszlo Brust described Fidesz voters as profoundly patriotic. Orban makes constant references to Hungary's historical greatness and keen on traditional Hungarian values, which, given that most Hungarians are Christian, are essentially conservative pro-family values. Fidesz's low tax rate means it also has some appeal with the more wealthy segments of the Hungarian middle class. It's also worth noting that Orban has pursued various policies to consolidate his grip on power. Let's start with the electoral system itself, which was drafted by Fidesz in 2010 after it won a two-thirds majority, allowing it to make changes to the constitution. Today, the 199 member of the Hungarian National Assembly are elected using what's called the alternative member system. 106 members are elected by first-past-the-post in single-member constituencies, and the remaining 93 seats are decided by a proportional representation system. Voters are given two votes one for their local constituency, and one for the proportional representation list. This system advantages larger parties at the expense of smaller ones, which is how Fidesz are able to win 135 seats, 68% of the seats available, with just 53% of the vote. It's not just the electoral system which benefits Orban, though. Orban has also helped himself by granting citizenship to over a million ethnic Hungarians living outside the country, who overwhelmingly support Fidesz. In one poll, Fidesz received a staggering 91 points among Hungarians living in Romania. Sponsors of the opposition are apparently blacklisted from receiving government contracts and state subsidies, which are instead awarded to pro-Orban businessmen. Chief amongst them is Hungary's wealthiest man, who just so happens to be Orban's childhood friend. While not under direct censorship, Hungarian media space is mostly tilted in favour of the government. State-owned media is apparently vehemently pro-government, with little space for opposition politicians, and private media is still in the hands of pro-government oligarchs. Orban has also reshuffled the judicial system to his advantage, creating a parallel court system to deal with human rights-related cases like elections, asylum and political protests, where judges and court presidents are essentially decided by the government. You get the point, while Fidesz did indeed win a heavy majority, it wasn't really an even playing field, which is why the OSCE has described Hungary's last two elections as not fair, and will probably do the same with this one. But even the OSCE admits that Hungary's elections, while they're not fair, are at least free. Which begs the question, how did the opposition do so badly? Well, the first thing to say is that this actually isn't the first time the Hungarian opposition have tried an electoral coalition. A bunch of left-wing parties, including the Hungarian Socialist Party, Democratic Coalition and Dialogue for Hungary, formed an electoral pact in 2014 to challenge Fidesz but ended up winning just 27% of the vote, far less than the 44% of the vote Fidesz won, which translated into a healthy 133-seat supermajority. 
Wanting to prevent a repeat of this scenario, this new coalition decided to expand the alliance to include the Green Party, Momentum Movement and Jobbik. But while this might have widened their appeal a bit, the coalition, which includes post-communist left-wingers, liberal reformers and even former neo-Nazis from Jobbik, has struggled to present a united front. In an attempt to create a consensus, the opposition bloc decided to hold its own primary and elect a unifying figure that they could all rally around. A small town mayor without any party affiliation was nominated as the leader of the United Opposition, becoming Auburn's first proper challenger in years. He campaigned on a broad anti-corruption appeal, pushing for integration with the EU and compliance with its rules, and a commitment to individual liberties and protection of minorities. The coalition constantly blasted Auburn for seemingly stirring up hate and division, and mainly for driving Hungary into isolation within the EU and NATO. Given the current situation in Ukraine, many observers expected that Auburn's special relationship with Vladimir Putin would cripple his public image. However, the upcoming energy and refugee crisis was presented by the government media as another existential threat which Orban was protecting Hungarians from. Declaring his commitment to peace and continuing energy imports from Russia, Orban was once again seen putting the interests of ordinary Hungarians before those of the crooked international elite, and the opposition struggled to present a viable counter-narrative. The coalition were also outflanked by a far-right movement, formed by former Jobbik deputies, who resisted Jobbik's inclusion in the more moderate coalition. Ultimately, Jobbik sabotaged the electability of Marki Zai's alliance by being too right-wing, while Mi Hazank picked up disaffected voters who felt betrayed by Jobbik's collaboration with left-wing liberal parties, winning 6% of the vote. All in all, it looks like the opposition hasn't learned from the mistakes of the 2014 election. United for Hungary came across as ideologically confused and ran a mostly negative campaign focused on reversing Orban's most illiberal policies, and it looks like ultimately Hungarian voters were willing to give Orban some leeway as long as he offers security and stability. This is why Hungary is staying on the same course it's been on for the past 12 years, and Orban will likely consolidate his power even further, having been emboldened by a strengthened mandate. This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform that turns complex subjects into fun and interactive experiences. I actually did a computer science degree, and I've loved exploring Brilliant to refresh my skills, as well as learning new ones to help with my current job, like their superb statistics courses. But you don't need any kind of background in STEM. If you just want to spend a bit of time building your skills, then you can do it right away with no long, boring lectures like the ones I had to sit through. Sorry to my former university. Instead, you can learn through interactive games and puzzles, the kind of thing you actually want to do. There's something at all levels too, with more advanced courses on things like neural networks and even quantum computing. Just pick a course that you're interested in and get started. They're all designed by award-winning instructors and built upon the principle of active learning. So you're gaining STEM knowledge by actually doing it. Brilliant helps you learn new things and sharpen your skills. So if you want to improve with STEM, then you should sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR EU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks so much for supporting the channel.